a man's egotistical nature and a woman's insecure nature. Man, these are our superpowers and our kryptonite. Let's see how we can use them. Let's get into it. Get your glasses up. Get your glasses up. A toast to the men. Thanks for joining A Toast to the Men Network with SD Booker. You could be anywhere right now, but you decided to break bread with me, break some time with me, and I appreciate it. Now, Toasters, as you come in, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. If you are not subscribed, you do not want to miss this great content. Now, what we're going to touch on today is DJ Envy, man. DJ Envy and his wife, Gia. Just a portion uh, of what happened uh, between them that they told us, they told the world. Uh, they're going around uh, promoting their book. They're on the book promotion tour. Uh, they wrote a, co-wrote a book together about their marriage, some of their challenges, their ups and downs. And uh, I commend them from, for that. That's something that should be saluted. They've been together since they were 15 years old. So, man, I think they've been married between 22, 24 years. And so, man, whether you're in a, a good relationship or a bad relationship, to be together for that long is something that should be saluted. Uh, you know, somebody may look at it a different way, but both of these people could could, could leave, right? Uh, they got the bread. They got the fame to, to leave. So it's something definitely there that's keeping them together. Uh, and and me being an optimist, I want to think it's something of substance, right, over style. So recently during the book tour, uh, DJ Envy and his wife expressed a time period within their life where they were going through some rough stuff. They were having an argument at the particular time. And in a, in a moment of anger, a moment of rage, uh, Gia, his wife, shouted that your sex has been horrible for years. She would said for years or the last 10 years. And I think at that time, they had only been married for about 10 years, right? <laughs> so, they, damn, the entire marriage. So, at the time, his initial response was, what? What, man? I put it down. What you talking about? And she expressed to him that she had been faking orgasms. Now, man, this is uh, this is something that people carry to their graves. You know, uh, a lot of people would not expose this. So these people have been very vulnerable. Like I said, I like to stay on the optimistic side. So I think it's genuine. I think they're, of course, they want to sell some books. But I don't think they would, uh, and I don't know them. But like I said, I'm an optimist. So I would hope they wouldn't expose this merely to sell or solely to sell books uh, i think it's, it comes comes from a genuine place and they want to help people so i salute them for being vulnerable but this is something that happens a lot in relationships man uh to my knowledge i've never experienced this right but uh i've heard this stuff before you know women faking orgasms uh basically living a lie and uh you know, it, it does have to be questioned, right? And we won't focus on this, but it does have to be questioned. If Envy was broke, financially broke, and horrible in the bedroom, would she be around? That is something to question, right? Uh, now, on that, I, I lean towards no. I don't think women going to just tolerate, man, you ain't got no bread, and you're horrible in the bedroom. I don't think they're tolerating that. Uh, nah, nah, I don't think so. So I would have to lean towards no on that. But we want to talk about insecurities or the insecure nature of the woman and the egotistical nature of the man. Now, from the surface, we would say having an ego is bad and having insecurities are bad. But I, I just don't agree with that. I think there's polarity in life. And I actually think these are our superpowers. And I, I think it's okay for a man to have an ego. I think he should have an ego. And I think a woman should have insecurities. This is what makes us who we are. This is our true essence. You know, from a light side and a dark side, this is who we are. There's no planes in the air without an ego. 
There is no way I'm communicating with you right now without an ego. No, no way. Uh, there's no cars on the road without ego. It's not possible. I'm not wearing these clothes. Nobody makes these clothes without ego. The first person to say, man, I can put this with this and stretch this and, and mix these chemicals, these chemicals with this, and I can make a shirt. That's not insecurity. That's ego. That's an audacity to dream, to think big, <laughs> you know, to do the unknown. So that, that's ego. The flip side to that, ego can ruin your relationships. Ego can, can get you killed. Ego can get you some diseases. You know, ego can burn bridges, right? Ego can leave you alone, alone and destitute. It really can, if it's not managed correctly. Like I said, it's your superpower, man, and it's also your kryptonite. So you, you got to manage that. Now, insecurities, yes, it's natural for a woman to be insecure. A lot of them won't uh, admit it, but if you've been around enough women, your mom, your sisters, your daughters, uh, your woman, your coworkers, your friends, You'll know all women, all women have insecurities, but that's a beautiful thing. And man, you should embrace it. Now you shouldn't let their insecurities run your house or rule your house. Those insecurities have to be managed or man, they, they can cause some damage. They can cause some damage, but the insecurities is a woman's superpower, man. It, it really is. Um, it makes her intuitive. She can relate to people and see and sense things and mannerisms and cues and, and the tone of voice because of her insecurities. You know, she can receive certain signals and she's sensitive to those things. It makes her more genuine, more kind, more relatable. Uh, so there are some superpowers in that. Uh, the flip side of it, if it's not managed correctly, It'll destroy relationships. It really will. It'll, it'll end a woman. to have a woman in the penitentiary. It'll have a woman uh, having you in the penitentiary. <laughs> you know, it, uh, it'll, it'll break up families. An insecure woman can start wars. Yeah. Uh, well, well, a woman that cannot manage her insecurity can start wars. Literally. Yeah. So... I want to name some, some things I wrote down, some strengths about insecurities. So embrace it, women. And, and men, you got to, don't, don't use it as a weapon against her because she's insecure. What you should say if her insecurities are out of whack or unbalanced, like just tell her she needs to manage her insecurities. But her insecurities are actually her superpower. Okay, so five common strengths in people who often feel insecure. You know, these are women sensitive to the other's needs, perceptive of the emotional nuances others are experiencing. They pick up on facial cues easily and quickly. A woman can save you from getting into serious trouble, man. <laughs> she could tap you and say, no, it's time to go. I ain't feeling this energy or I just saw this happen over there. They're plotting something. Yeah, man, if she's in tune. Considerate and polite. These are, some, these, these are some strengths that comes from being insecure. Loyal and supportive of friends. Introspective and work hard on personal growth. Listen, man. I know, I know women are saying, let's watch and this is saying, well, <laughs> there's a caveat to this. Anytime I've done those things, I've gotten in trouble. Yeah. And that's typically true. true. Anytime you show a strength, you're or imbalanced. So in boxing, if I throw a punch, right? There's an opening. I, I can have the best jab in the game. The best jab. But anytime I throw a punch, 
anytime there's an opening and I could be hurt. I could be counter punched. And so I get it, women. It's like, man, I, I've done this and it's backfired on me. But this is the thing. Never do this for anyone before you do it for yourself. Self-care is the number one thing in life, anyone's life. And this goes for men too, but we're talking about women right now. Self-care. So sensitive to others' needs. Never be more sensitive sensitive to someone else's needs than you are to your own. You, you got to take care of yourself first. You got to. You're going to get burnt out. Perceptive of the emotional nuances others are experiencing. They pick up on facial cues easily and quickly. Hey, man, this is a good skill to have. You know, and only an insecure woman can pick this up from others. But you need to know yourself first. You need to know your own cues, your own mannerisms, your own habits first before you start picking up on others. Be sensitive to yourself first before you invest in others. Considerate and polite. Be that to yourself first. This always goes back to self first. Be that to yourself first. Loyal and supportive of friends. Yes, be that to yourself first. Again, be that to yourself first. So even in boxing, if I throw a jab, yes, that's exposed. But I should never be irresponsible to give up on defense. I should never be uh, uh, defensively irresponsible. No, jab quick, get back. Jab quick, get back. Fill him out. So, yeah, you got to be responsible even when you're loving, even when you're letting the strengths of your insecurities flow and glow. You got to be responsible, meaning take care of self first before you invest in others. You can't give something to others that you haven't given to yourself. You're going to be depleted. All right. Men. Embrace the ego, brothers. And women embrace a man's ego. If I was to ask 50 women, we're going to say 50 women around the age of 45. They've probably experienced a few men, different types of men. If I was to ask 50 women around the age of 45, would you rather live out the rest of your life, and you got to live in the same home, live out the rest of your life, with a man who is who who is extremely insecure, extremely insecure, but he does quite well financially. But he's extremely insecure. Or live out the rest of your life with a man who's egotistical, but he's a decent provider. I think most women are going to choose the egotistical man. I've heard too many women say they left the man or they, they exited a relationship because they couldn't handle the insecurities. They, they're like, yeah, he made good money, but, but forget the money. I, I'm done. I'll give the car back. I'll leave the house. I want out. The, the insecurity was just too much. And I've heard women say it was like living with another woman. That's because things are off balance, man. You're taking on her essence. And so for her to just truly vibe in her own essence, man, it's going to be a struggle. It is like two women living together. Or she's going to have to pull down from the ego more and become more manly. That's not going to work either. She doesn't want to do that. So it never works. What we got to do, embrace our true essence the man's ego, and the woman's insecurity nature. That's, it's powerful, man. It's a beautiful thing. Again, man, don't beat her over the head because she's insecure. That's her superpower, man. That, that would bring you some joy. That would bring you some balance. That would save your life in situations. Yes, man. A woman would multiply your, your, your fortune. She will multiply anything you bring to the table. She will. On the flip side, 
if she doesn't know how to manage her securities or if you beating her over the head with her insecurities she will multiply your grief she will multiply your pain and so we we, we got to be within our true essence man i heard envy once say that when they met he was very insecure he was a nerd and he never felt like he was good enough for his wife he never felt like he deserved her. He was always insecure. And he said, this is what pushed him to cheat me, he thinks also. This is what he says. And I can see that happening. Uh, but man, you never want to be in a position where you don't feel like you deserve her. She doesn't want that. It's not going to work. I'm telling you, man, you're going you're gonna to have an outburst some kind of way, either cheating or you're going to try to beat her down to make yourself feel better. It's not going to work. You need to embrace who you are, embrace who she is, and, and, and use it for strengths, man, to uplift one another, to build one another. And, and we got to see that, man. Uh, I'm going to close out with this. This is something I saw uh, Michelle Obama say. And, uh, you know, I've always taken a liking to Michelle Obama, more than a husband, actually. You know, I'm not I'm not a Barack supporter. <laughs> I do respect uh, him as an orator. I respect him as a sober minded person, uh, but I don't like his politics. But as a man, I can respect him. You know, uh, I think he's someone I, I would like if I if I knew him. But uh, his politics, I, I don't I don't rock with. But uh, as a human being, I like what Bar Barack and Barack is very egotistical. Oh yeah, don't let it fool you. Very egotistical. Ask Michelle. But uh. And that's a good thing. But this is Michelle Obama talking about her insecurities. So she was on a book tour a few years ago, uh, well, maybe a couple of years ago. And she went to a school and uh, to, to promote this book. There was a, an audience of 300 students that she was speaking to. And, and this is what she said. You know, when she first got into the White House uh, as First Lady, she felt very insecure when she had to go to the UK to visit the Queen. She didn't know what to say, how to act, and the Queen told her, just be yourself. Just just get in. Don't she was like, all these customs, these royal customs is rubbish. Don't trip on it. Don't don't worry about it. And so that gave her some comfort. But she was insecure about that. And she also said here, Asked how she felt to be seen as a symbol of hope, Mrs. Obama told students, I still have a little bit of imposter syndrome. I'm going to pause right there. Imposter syndrome, meaning she's putting on an act she doesn't belong. She doesn't deserve imposter syndrome. It never goes away that you're actually listening to me. So she's in awe and in disbelief that people are actually listening to her. Let's look at that, man. Uh, that's a powerful statement. Now, people may say, well, that's toxic. That's bad. No, actually, that's a good thing. It's powerful for her to be self-aware, to be accountable, to know this is one of my insecurities. But I also think it also helps propel her to be relatable and enduring to people also. People can really relate to Michelle Obama. I'm telling you, man, white men, white women, Asians, Mexicans, blacks, men and women, people relate to Michelle Obama. You know, they, they, they really do, man. She says, it doesn't go away, that feeling that you shouldn't take me that seriously. What do I know? I share that with you because we all have doubts in our abilities about our power and what that power is. Man, she basically just saying what I said, man. If I'm giving people hope, then that is a responsibility. So I have to make sure that I am accountable. Being accountable means being truthful, knowing who you are. And I think that is a woman that, that knows who she is. She embraces her insecurities. She understands this 
or these insecurities uh, make up my superpower, but I have to manage them. I have to be honest, I have to be accountable, I have to face myself, I have to invest in self-care, and then I can give to others. But her, her insecurities is her superpower. It make her enduring, relatable, sensitive to others. Um, yeah, but Barack's ego uh, <laughs> gets him into the White House. He, he wrote a book, The Audacity to Dream. Think about that, The Audacity to Dream. That's ego. That's the only way you reach the height you want to reach is ego. The only way you can reach that height and not fall is being being connected to a woman who knows herself, embraces her insecurities, and use it as a superpower of righteousness and not to destroy. Amen. As always, from me to you, love. Peace. If you enjoyed this video and previous videos, go to www.angel2angelhelp.org and donate. That's www.angel2angelhelp.org and donate. We provide services for the homeless, the mentally ill, the elderly, and the youth.